for the order of reaction lab, once you have uh, your setup, including the glass 5 milliliter pipettes and pipette pump, the cuvettes, three, one for each trial, your three beakers, of course, for the crystal violet, the sodium hydroxide, and the water. You have your colorimeter, which you've taken out of the box and attached to the spark. You can see that it just plugs into the very top right there. It only plugs in one way, and it's connected to the actual colorimeter. And the thing is in there at the moment. The on-off button is on the bottom. Once it's plugged in, then you turn it on, and it will, excuse the glare, provide you with this screen right here. Once your colorimeter is connected to the spark and you've turned on the spark, you'll see this screen. It's going to ask you for what absorbance and transmittance you want to use. First thing you want to do is you want to build a file. So you want to click on this lower right hand button here. It says build. You click there. Now it gives you this screen. Now I know the directions say 592 nanometers, but I want you to pick 565 for the green wavelength. Green is the absorption, 565 nanometers, you click on that, and we're picking green because the complementary color to violet is yellow, but we don't have yellow, so you pick green because that's the next closest thing, or you might say the green is the maximum absorption uh, for violet. Once you have that, you're going to want to click on the graph button in the upper left-hand corner. There's some choices there, and it's going to end up you can see there that it's going to graph on your y-axis the green color. So over time, time is going to be on your x-axis. And you're going to click OK. So now you have the graph set up. Uh, all you have to do is start. We keep our chemicals in the hood. Um, even though we're not using truly caustic levels of, let's say, the sodium hydroxide or the crystal violet, we uh, want to observe proper safety procedures, and of course you'll be wearing your goggles. Um, you're going to use your 50 or 100 milliliter beaker, and the directions say to add about 20 milliliters of the crystal violet, sodium hydroxide, and the water. So um, you can use a pipette if you wish, or you may just pour uh, a little bit in. Um, we only have seven groups. We have quite a bit more crystal violet than we need, so I'm not that worried about having exactly 20 milliliters in your small beaker. Once you've put in the 20 milliliters of the crystal violet and the 20 milliliters of the water and the 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, I don't want you to forget the watch glass that you put on top of the sodium hydroxide so that you can limit the amount of sodium bicarbonate that's produced when the sodium hydroxide reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air. I would also strongly encourage you to label with the uh, dots on the top of your cuvettes. So I have a blank that I'm going to put in um, the water, and then I have the three uh, trials, one, two, and three, so that way it'll be uh, less chance of mixing them. In order to run the blank, uh, open up your cuvette, or your, I'm sorry, your colorimeter, take the blank, set it inside the chamber, close it, and you're going to press this green button. It's going to light up. It's going to light up, and once it is uh, completed running the blank, the light will go off. Now, I just ran trial one. Uh, it was difficult for me to hold the camera, my iPhone camera, and run this at the same time, so I'm just going to show you here at the end. Um, so I put in the water and the sodium hydroxide, and then I added the crystal violet quickly. Uh, you can see that it's still a little bit purple. It was much more purple. Um, you're going to invert it a couple times, wipe it down with a Kim wipe because you don't want any fingerprints to be on it. Wipe it down quickly with a Kim wipe, put it into the colorimeter, close the lid, and you're going to press the play button right here. Okay. Uh, the run should go until the absorbance drops below 0.1. You can see 0.1 there. I went a little bit longer. Uh, it should not take you more than seven minutes for that run to be completed. And you're going to do this for all three. Since there's at least two of you in the group, uh, one person could be holding the cuvette while the other person adds it. Then they just cap it, shake it, invert it, and then they can put it in there. Uh, two of you can do this pretty quickly. All together, the run should take, I can't imagine, more than a half an hour. Uh, if you're taking your time. 
And uh, so we should be done with this lab within 45 minutes. That'll leave us 45 minutes there at the end of the period to review calculations and analysis.